What's up YouTube? Uh, today is a rainy day outside and it's a great time to edit my videos and give you a brief description of what I experienced this past weekend. We booked with Sacred Irish Tours and I'm so glad that we did that. Uh, we went with a smaller group and it was very, very informative. So just to give you an idea of what you're about to see, we went to Newgrange, which is the oldest and most visited megalithic tomb. We went to the Hill of Tara there towards the end and learned a lot of Gaelic uh, mythology, which is very interesting. We went to a 12th century church, I believe it's called Bective Abbey, where one of the scenes of Braveheart was filmed. And then we also went to another scene of Braveheart, but this was in a small town, small quaint little town. And I can't think of the name of it. I'll have to do a little bit of research. Um, but all of this was just such an enlightening experience. I uh, never would have thought that I would have gained this type of passive knowledge, I guess you could say, because it's not really uh, ingrained into my, into my thoughts where I can recall it. So without further ado, while I finish this cup of coffee, you can enjoy my video. Cheers. The religion of the passage to Linders was at least partly dedicated to the sun. Among many ancient farming peoples, where survival depended on knowledge of the seasons, religion was focused on the sun. An understanding of the sun's progress across the sky was vital to their physical and spiritual lives. But the tombs were not meant simply to record the movements of the sun. Wooden sight lines to take astronomical observations must have existed long before stone monuments were built. The tombs were designed to contain the bones of the ancestors and somehow to connect these remains with the movements of the sun. Prediction of solar events was not a science but a tradition, a life skill, which appeared to bring the seasons under control. In the great tomb at Mouth, one passage was built to face due east, the other due west. This meant that on the morning of the spring equinox, around March the 20th, the sun shone directly up the east passage. That evening, when the sun was setting, its light penetrated into the West Passage. We can imagine on that morning a solemn procession slowly moving around the outside of the huge mound, stopping and contemplating the symbols on each of the decorated curbstones. Perhaps the intention was to include the souls of departed ancestors in the celebration of spring, or to get their blessing, so that the process of the year would continue as it always had. As the Earth journeys on in its orbit, the northern half of the globe comes to face into the sun, and summer comes to the northern hemisphere. Much as in more recent times, the people of the Boyne Valley probably climbed hills, swam in rivers, and lit hilltop bonfires to celebrate the summer solstice on June the 21st, the longest day of the year. But they also believed that at these quarter days, the junctions between spring, summer, autumn and winter, the world they could see and feel was much closer than usual to the world of the spirits. And as the northern hemisphere begins to tilt away from the sun, winter approached the Boyne Valley. Days became shorter, shadows longer, and the sun fell lower in its track across the southern sky. Grass and food crops stopped growing. Young, more delicate animals were taken to shelter. The earth got colder and the sky darker. Until December the 21st, the winter solstice, and the greatest festival of the year. 
People from miles around must have gathered in New Grange on the night of December the 20th to pray and to watch for the sun rising over the high ground opposite the tomb. Most of the gathering stayed outside the entrance to the tomb, where small oval settings of granite and quartz, a mineral connected in many societies with light, invoked the power of the earth and the sun. Inside the chamber, a small group of elders assembled to witness the communion between the sunlight and the souls of their ancestors, perhaps to deposit a newly cremated burial. As the shining ball of the midwinter sunrise climbed over the horizon, the quartz around the entrance to the tomb took on a golden color. Seconds later, sunlight penetrated the wolf box, and a thin beam of light appeared at the floor of the chamber, casting a warm glow on the assembled people, living and dead. As the light retreated slowly back down the passage, what had happened? in the minds of the people. Did the energy from the sun bring spiritual life to the souls interred in the chamber? Or did the spirits of the ancestors travel along the shaft of light to revive the sun and banish darkness? Whatever they believed had taken place, they now knew that the sun would once again climb in the sky towards springtime at the beginning of a new year.